Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at which games we should be on the lookout for for the month of May. Now, pretty much at the beginning of each month, I take a look at all the games that are currently announced, and I pick out the ones that I think have the highest potential to maybe be a hit on the Nintendo Switch. Now, the month of May is shaping up a little weird, because I'll be honest with you, there seems to be missing pieces. Now, every month we get shadow drops. That is nothing new. But this month, I really feel like the current list, although there are some interesting titles, that there is going to be quite a few shadow drops. And also, if you're not aware, there's going to be a Zelda Direct in just a couple of days. So who knows, maybe we'll get some good news there. But nonetheless, today I have about 12 titles that I'd like to take a look at that we should maybe keep our eyes peeled. They could turn out to be pretty decent for the month of May. Now, as usual, just before we get started, don't forget that if you like this content, please hit the like button. It's the best way to support the channel and also subscribe if you aren't already. Now, the first game on our list is hitting on May 5th, and it's probably not going to become as a surprise to any of my regular viewers, but I'm going to have my eyes peeled on Save Me Mr. Tackle, the Definitive Edition. It's actually pretty much a sure thing that this will be a decent game for anyone who's really into the retro Game Boy style games. Why? Because this is the Definitive Edition, and the original edition released in 2018 was very much appreciated. Now this one for $14.99 is coming out with tons of content. It's going to have six different worlds with over 50 different levels and totals and over 50 abilities to accumulate throughout the game. And on top of that, it's going to have some additional dungeons to explore. The game says there will be at least 16 dungeons. So that is actually quite a bit of content for a retro type of game. Now, the next game on our list is another pretty sure thing if you're into the style of gameplay, and that is Raiden for the Mikado Remix. Once again, it's a remix, and we already know that Raiden 4, if you're into the top-down arcade-style space shooter, is a really, really good series. And right now, there's a pre-order discount of 10%, so if you're into this game, I would jump on this because it might take quite a while before this game sees any type of sales. The Raiden series really doesn't come on sale very often on the eShop, and it is among some of the best space shooters you can get. Now, still on May 6th, the third entry on our list is going to be our first question mark title, meaning that I'm not quite sure if it's going to be worth the investment, but we'll find out on May 6th. And that is Non-Guns, the Doppelganger Edition, that's going to be selling for $14.99. Now, this is described as a roguelite action platformer, and we know that we have a lot of those right now on the Switch. However, what really attracts me to this one is the really far out art style. And we know that right now the roguelite genre is so packed that to really stand out from the crowd, you have to do something special. Now, the question is, will the gameplay match the originality of the art style? Well, after May 6th, I guess we'll find out. And I'm really hoping for something special here. Now, the next title on our list is another title that could go either way. It could be a hit or it could be a miss. And that is Fire Ung's Quest that is releasing all the way on May 12th. Now, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Now, this is another title that will be releasing for $14.99. Now, this one is described as a humoristic exploration puzzle adventure. And what really seems to be original is it apparently has no dialogue whatsoever because it's set as if you were a caveman and obviously he can't speak. But once again, what drew me into this one is the amazing art style. I'm really into the cartoony design, and if they can really pull off the humor without any dialogue and really some pretty interesting puzzle work behind that, maybe it'll be worth the $15. Now, if we jump to May 14th, we have two of the bigger releases for the month of May. We have the Famicom Detective Club, the two parts that are basically releasing for $34.99 each. Now, I know a lot of people were waiting for these titles, but they're not normally quite in the type of gameplay that I'm really into. But they're basically visual novels all about solving different crimes. And I know that basically a lot of people are saying that if you're really into the Ace Attorney series, you should definitely be checking out the Famicom Detective Club. I personally, I'm not sure I'm going to be checking those two out. The reason why isn't really that I don't want to try these visual novels, 
it's a, because of the price. At $35 a piece, I do feel that they're a little bit more on the pricey end. But I'm turning the question over to all of you that maybe know more about this series than I actually do, because as I said, normally I'm not into the visual novels and whatnot. Do you think that these are going to be worth $35 a piece? Let me know in the comments down below, but one way or the other, I'm sure that these are going to sell a ton on the 14th of May, and I'm sure that people that are really into visual novels will probably be very satisfied with these releases. Now, still staying at that date of May 14th, we have two other big releases to look out for, and that is both parts of the Subnautica series that are going to be selling these for $26.99 a piece. Now, this is a series that I actually played a couple of years ago on PC, and Subnautica basically has you dropping on an alien planet and trying to survive by basically scavenging for food and materials and basically advancing your technology far enough where you'll actually be able to call for a rescue. And the basic difference between the two parts is that the first one will have you visiting the planet during a more of a summer months where basically you're visiting the planet while the oceans are unfrozen and very tropical, while the second part will have you basically visiting the planet under frozen conditions or ice age conditions, if you will. Now, the only question that I have about these games, because I'll tell you that if you're into the hunting, gathering, survival genre, these are actually really great games, is I'm wondering how they're going to be running on the Switch. So if that is an issue for you, if you want to wait to see what the frame rate and graphics look like, I would definitely say wait for a couple of reviews to come out before you jump and drop the $27 a piece. So for the next title on our list, we're going to be jumping to May 18th, and we're going to take a look at Jet Board Joust. Now, this is a hardcore roguelike arcade style shoot 'em up. Now, I love my shoot 'em ups, and the art style in this game once again has drawn me in and has attracted my attention. Where if the gameplay can match the originality of the graphics, we could actually have a really fun game. Of course, if you're not into hardcore roguelites, I would say stay away from this one because they're really announcing it as a difficult game. So when the developer themselves announces the game as a difficult game, you know you're going to be getting quite a challenge. But if you're up to it, for $9.99, this is one of the cheaper releases for the month that I'd be willing to take a gamble on. Now, the next game on our list actually already has a demo out on the eShop and it was featured in the last Indie Direct, and that is Aerial Knights Never Yield, which is a really special auto runner that at the same time has an awesome soundtrack. Like what they seem to be pushing a lot with this game is the mix of the visuals and the soundtrack. I tried the demo itself. I was I did find that the game was impressive but I'm not quite sure that it was enough to draw me in to the point to say I want to play another auto runner. But at $11.99, they're at least asking for a pretty decent price for the package that you're getting. So if you're into auto runners that have a really original visual style and especially a really original soundtrack, I would say take a look at Aerial Knights Never Yield, at least download the demo and give it a shot. And basically, you can figure out if on May 19th, you're going to want to pick up the full game. Now, next, we jump to May 20th, but slash May 24th, because we're going to be taking a look at Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, the HD remaster. Look, if you're into really far out JRPGs, Shin Megami Tensei 3 is an amazing one. So let's just get that out of the way right away. It's an amazing JRPG. If you're into that, Check this one out. The Shin Megami Tensei series is an amazing series. But I just don't like what they're doing with the release, where they're releasing the digital deluxe edition that is $69.99 on the 20th. If you want just the base edition, you have to wait till the 24th and it'll be $20 less. Of course, personally, if I was jumping into the Shin Megami Tensei 3, I would get the digital deluxe and pay the extra $20 for the extra content because you have extra map packs and, and things like that. It's not only stuff like uh, soundtracks and useless things. There's actually gameplay content in the pack. However, at the same time, I just don't like it when they do two separate release dates, sort of forcing you to pay the bigger price if you want the game quicker. But it is a strategy that they do sometime. I just want to let you know that you don't necessarily on the 20th have to drop $69.99. If you just want the base version of the game, it'll be coming out on the 24th for $49.99.
Now, the next game on our list, I know a lot of people are waiting for on May 21st, and that is Miitopia, where basically you get to create your own Mii characters and throw them into an RPG. So you actually get to go through an RPG with your actually family, friends, or anyone you want to create in the game. And this one's going to be releasing on the 21st for $49.99. It also has a free downloadable demo. So if you're sort of unsure of what I'm explaining, I would definitely say check out the demo. It'll convince you right away if this game is for you or not. Me personally, I'm not super into the Miitopia. I'm probably going to be passing on this one unless it eventually gets a sale further down the road. But I know a ton of people are interested in this one. And the gameplay quality is there. It's a fun game. I just personally am not super into creating my own characters for a RPG adventure. I just prefer playing one that's set out ahead of time. But nonetheless, it is a super interesting game. It's releasing on May 21st. And if you're into any of this, definitely check it out. Now we're almost at the end of the list. but We still have a couple of games to take a look at. And now we're jumping to May 25th with Very Very Valet. And this is actually one of the more exciting titles, at least for me personally, for the month. It's basically a couch co-op party game that has you being a valet. So you're going to be parking cars, I assume taking the cars back to their customers and back and forth. I'm getting very serious Overcooked vibes from this game and I love Overcooked. I love playing that with my family. It's an awesome couch co-op game. Of course, we get a little competitive sometimes, so sometimes the action gets a little heated. But nonetheless, I love these type of games, especially if they're done in a quality fashion. And since then was this one was actually featured in a direct, there's a very good chance that it's going to be a high quality game. Uh, the price is a little high at $24.99. I would have liked to see between the $15 to $20 mark for this game. But nonetheless, it's not in the outlandish pricing either. But I'm going to be definitely probably picking up Very Very Valet. So if you're into this game, definitely check around the between the 25th and the 30th. I most likely will be posting a review. And now for the last game on our list, we're going to be staying on May 25th with the release of Maneater, which basically is an action RPG that has you playing as a man-eating shark. And this will be releasing for $39.99. Now, overall, I know that this is a pretty decent game because it's already released on other platforms and it is a pretty interesting twist on the action RPG. Everyone agrees that it's not a top notch game, but it is a pretty decent one. Once again, I have some running concerns for the Switch, so I'm really looking forward to how this one actually plays on the Switch. But if you want my two cents for this one, if unless you're really, really into it and you can't wait to play it, I would definitely say hold out on this one a little while because since this is a release from other consoles that's already releasing at a lower price here, there's a pretty good chance we'll be getting this one on a sale in not too long. Like I wouldn't expect more than a month or two before we start seeing Maneater getting on sale and getting it for a lower price. I can't guarantee it because I don't have any inside information, but it's just the feeling I have from this type of game that if you want Maneater, I would wait for a month or two and you're probably going to get it closer to the $20 mark. But on the other hand, if you can't wait to play as a man-eating shark, well, on May 25th, you can drop the $40 and pick this one up. So that's pretty much it now for my list of games for the month of May. However, I really am interested in that Famicom Detective series. If you, anyone out there really thinks it's a definite purchase at $35, I just want to hear from you in the comments. Explain to me why this is such an amazing series at that price. Like I said, the Ace Attorney series, I agree, was amazing, but I love picking it up on sale because I got three games for a super low price, and that's what really made it worth it for me. However, if you really think it's worth that $35, I want to hear from you in the comments. Explain to me why. And also at the same time, I don't know if you're getting the same feeling as me, but I really feel like we're missing a couple of bigger releases here. Maybe there's going to be shadow drops during the month. But anyway, just before we go, don't forget that if you did like this content and you want to see more, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and hit that notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. As usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.